Good evening, Ed. Kyle Kashuv says he and some others were trying to be as extreme and shocking as possible when he used the N-word repeatedly, including about black student athletes. The offensive comments were made in a Google document that served as a chat space and was shared among several friends. But somebody retrieved the document and posted screenshots of it in a video on Twitter. Kashuv says at the time he was thoughtless and immature and that he made the remarks months before the Parkland shooting that killed 17 of his classmates. But it appears some former students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School wanted nothing to do with his apology and took the matter directly to Harvard, asking the college to rescind Kashuv's admission. Kashuv then apologized to Harvard for the, quote, hurtful things he wrote, saying he's no longer the same person, especially in the wake of the shooting, and asked how he could right this wrong. It didn't help. In a letter that Kyle Kashuv shared publicly, Harvard wrote in part, quoting, as you know, the committee takes seriously the qualities of maturity and moral character. After careful consideration, the committee voted to rescind your admission to Harvard College. Kashuv now believes that he was targeted more for his politics than his offensive comments. Remember, in the wake of the Parkland shooting, he became a prominent media figure who supported gun rights and became the high school outreach director for a conservative group with ties to the Trump family. Today, he tweeted, quoting, After I issued this apology, speculative articles were written. My peers used the opportunity to attack me, and my life was once again reduced to a headline. It sent me into one one of the darkest spirals of my life. In 2017, Harvard also rescinded admission for at least 10 students who shared sexually explicit and racist messages on Facebook. Two other students who graduated this year from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High will be attending Harvard in the fall. Kyle Kashuv is unclear where he will attend. All yeah. right, let's find out now. Trace, appreciate it. Joining me now in a story exclusive of the man himself, Kyle Kashuv. Kyle, good evening. How's it going, Ed? It's going well, but I want to talk to you. I want to get to Harvard in a moment, but I want to start with you. What were you thinking? Well, at that time, it was really um, a friend group where who could say the most shocking thing and most extreme thing uh, for the sake of shock value? Um, and I'm extremely sorry for it. Um, and I wish I could have taken it back, but I can't. Um, mm -hmm. All I can do right now is seek to right this wrong. And I know that forgiveness isn't given, it's earned. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that, you know, the person who wrote those things is not who I am today. How do um, we know that? Because uh, you certainly sound heartfelt, but you want to get something. You want to get into Harvard or get into another school? And how do we know that you're not just saying, oh, I didn't mean it? It's a fair question. Um, because at every single possibility uh, that I could have, uh, ever since I became a public figure, I have condemned racism, I have condemned hatred. Um, and that's why we've seen the alt-right come after me so hard, because I've condemned them um, for their racism and, f and for their hatred. Um, well, okay, so where does it come from when you say, you, in this chat room, you wanted to say the most outrageous thing. You could have said something about sex, you could have said something about drugs, you could have said something about any number of things. Mm -hmm. but. In one case, as was mentioned, you typed the N-word 11 times in a row and said, and we, we have it on the screen, mm -hmm. you said you were good at typing it because, quote, unquote, practice, you see it at the bottom, practice makes perfect. So you didn't use the N-word once. In one text, you used it 11 times. Where does that come from? Look, what I said is indefensible and wrong, and I apologize it for repeatedly. Um, but what's also in that same message is I use anti-Semitic mm -hmm. jokes. Um, and I basically pray every week. I'm Jewish. My parents are Jewish. They immigrated from Israel. Um, half my family was, was wiped out in the Holocaust. Uh, so clearly, um, that's not indicative of who I am. Um, I'm Jewish. Right. And there's, I'm not anti-Semitic at all. So on that point, you're Jewish. I can't question your faith or anyone's faith. But why in the world would you say kill all the Jews was one of the things you said? You're Jewish? Uh, you just told me many said, members of your that, family were killed in the Holocaust, and I'm certainly sorry about that. How could you possibly say kill all the Jews? Because it was in a time where the person who could say the most shocking thing, and, and that's what, that was the aura of the group. Um, okay. So you wrote this apology to Harvard, mm -hmm. and among other things, as Trace said, they said, you know, we appreciate the expression of regret, and we appreciate your candor. Mm-hmm but we're still not letting you in. And I find it 
interesting, among other mm -hmm. things, that you also wrote to the Harvard Diversity Office. Yeah. And around this time, they apparently didn't know that Harvard was saying, we appreciate your candor, but we're rescinding your admission. The Harvard, okay. Harvard Diversity Office sends you a separate letter that says, basically, we accept your apology. This sounds heartfelt. So if the diversity office accepted your apology, essentially, why in the world did the admissions office rescind it? I can't tell you. Some people are saying political bias. But I think one of the biggest things to look at is, is the state of academia right now. Mm -hmm. Is Harvard, for people who don't know, Harvard was founded in 1636. Uh, by slave owners. It has a long history of racism, sexism, misogyny. Uh, but I think that people can grow and people can change. Right. And, and I, don't, I don't hold that st standard to Harvard. And I think that people can make mistakes. And I don't think that mistakes make you irredeemable, as Harvard showed for me, as Fair Harvard point. Uh, established for me. Can I give you a time out there? So you're sure. mentioning that they had slave owners in the 1600s. Mm -hmm. You using the N-word was, what, a year, year and a half ago? Do you two see years it? ago. Two years ago. A little more recent. Okay. I go back to my first question. How do we know you've, you've really changed? What specifically, you've, you went through an awful tragedy in Florida and have been held by some, and, and you should be, for your poise going through a tragedy that I can't even imagine. But what specifically has changed in you in the last two years that you would it's no not, longer write the N-word or say the N-word? Well, it's because I've matured tremendously. Uh, it's that I no longer am in that friend group where we act immaturely uh, like idiotic children. Um, it's the fact that I've condemned racism to every single opportunity that I have can in this public life that I didn't really ask for. It. You know, I never wanted, I never quite frankly, um, you know, wanted to be in this position. I'm not an entertainer. I'm not an actor. Mm -hmm. I'm a kid who went through a tragedy who saw the suffering that his community went through and doesn't want to see it for any other community. So what um, advice, that's what I've been fighting for. What advice would you give to the 16-year-old Kyle Kashuv now? Say that again? What advice would you give to your 16-year-old self now that you've had this point of reflection? Well, I think I've changed tremendously from that kid. Um, but to the past, Kyle, I wish I could take back those comments. I, can. I can't. I'm extremely sorry for it. Um, and as I mentioned before, forgiveness isn't given, it's earned. And mm -hmm. I'm going to continue fighting to right this wrong and like reach out to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion because I felt like I had to. And I apologized mm -hmm. immediately because I felt like I had to. Sure. Now, um, because it's the, not, not because I, sorry, not because I felt like I had to, because it was mm -hmm. the right thing to do. Um, so people will be able to judge for themselves what they think about what you're saying, what you said then and what, you, what you're saying now. We appreciate you taking the tough questions tonight. But what kind of standard do you think Harvard is setting now? Do you, one would assume that there are freshmen and sophomores at mm -hmm. Harvard today who maybe said some dumb things when they were 16. Look, I don't, I think that people can mature and people can change. Um, and I, I really don't hope, I, I don't hope we continue moving in this direction uh, because I think the purpose of education is to assist people in their progression of growth and change. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't wish this onto anyone else. And there were, there were like five or six other people in that Google Doc who said similarly heinous and outrageous things and egregious and terrible things. So and I don't wish what happened to me uh, to happen to them. So I don't wish that. Let's end this conversation with your future. Uh, as I understand it, you, once Harvard said you were admitted, mm -hmm. you turned down scholarship money at places like George Washington University and other fine institutions, and I assume mm -hmm. they've moved on and picked other people. What's mm -hmm. next for you? What so do you the want deadline, to So the deadline for other colleges has ended. Um, but all I can do now is uh, I genuinely don't know. Um, I really I don't know what's in, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, what happened with the academia right now is, is frightful. Um, but I'm going to continue pushing for school safety because at the end of the day, the only reason why I'm here, uh, the only reason why I'm talking to you today uh, is what happened to my school yeah. um, on the 14th. And until every school, all I truly care about is that schools are safe. Um, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, and once again, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm really sorry uh, for the past comments I made. I'm going to do everything in my power to right this wrong. Well, Kyle, you have certainly stood up and tried to make sure that Stoneman Douglas and other schools are safe. You've moved to Washington, in fact, from Florida to speak out more. Uh, obviously, this has been a, a very painful episode for you, but we appreciate you coming in uh, and offering your thoughts on it. And I hope you feel like you've got your side of the story out tonight. Kyle, thank you.